Hey everybody and welcome to the live stream. Another live stream in which we are unboxing speakers yet again. This time it's going to be the Fluid Audio Image Image 2, sorry, the Fluid Audio Image 2 and uh, this time we're going to do it uh, with a little bit of a twist. But more on that later. First have a, have a story to tell or story an announcement to make actually. But before I'm going to do that, I'm first going to check on the chat. Are we all okay? I'm seeing some green here, so that should be okay. I changed a few settings in my in my streaming software, so I hope that uh, I hope that everything is okay. Yeah, comment for the algorithm. Yeah, I think I think we should be okay. So um, I'm now streaming with a different codec or something. It's uh, it's kind of weird how that works on YouTube. I'm actually streaming a 1440p uh, stream now. Um, and that gives it a different different codec or something. Um, yeah. Um, all okay. Thanks, Matt Steaks. Thanks, thanks. It's always nice to have audio engineers in the chat because they can, uh, you know, they can check <laughs> if everything is okay. Um, so before we going on. Uh, going to talk about these speakers, uh, I first have an announcement to make because. Um, I started a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I started a YouTube channel a few years ago, this one. Uh, but I started a second YouTube channel and it's called White Sea Clips. And that YouTube channel, it's kind of interesting how that came to be. Um, because I was clipping a few things out of these live streams. I now did three of these live streams and I was like, hey, I, I want to do something with it. And creating a YouTube shorts out of it was possible. But usually I have longer stories than the 90 seconds that you can use so um so i was thinking like okay um then let's let's just put it on the main channel or something but that would give a very cluttered um very cluttered experience uh, i didn't want to do that so um uh, so i decided to make a second channel with clips on there and i'm also going to share other clips on there Clips from snake oil videos, clips from review videos. Because what I tend to do is explain a certain subject that has something to do with the thing that I'm reviewing and I'm putting that in the review. And what I've noticed is that a lot of people are searching for, for answers uh, that I have already given in one of those videos. And by putting that on a separate um, clips channel with a clear title, it's easier to find it and it's also easier to watch because it's a way shorter video so um so yeah on the clips channel there will be uh, short uh, normal videos and also youtube shorts uh, type of videos because apparently the algorithms want that um clipping did i say clipping oh clipping in that kind of way sorry <laughs> <laughs> you were distracting me um um Anyway, um, the algorithm wants to see some shorts and that kind of stuff, but I don't want to put them on the main channel because the experience just... <sighs> I don't like it how YouTube puts them in between the normal videos, if you know what I mean. Uh, definitely when you go to a channel of a, of a creator when you're, you know, want to see all their videos, um, I'm now seeing more shorts than normal videos. I don't think that's a good experience, so I've made a second channel. White Sea Clips, it's in the description down below. And uh, yeah, go ahead and... Uh, if you like it, consider to subscribe there. All right. Um, let's see. Everything is okay. Uh, getting a warning that my bitrate is too high. Well, I think that won't hurt. Sounding good, looking good. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit confused by that clipping comment because I was like, oh shit, my audio is clipping now. Well, it isn't clipping on my in-ear, so I, I wouldn't know what uh, what would be going on then. Um so the speakers, the Fluid Audio Image 2. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit of a coincidence that I'm now reviewing, uh, you know, three three speakers at the same time. I've got the heads over there. They're in the, you, you can see them. I've got them stacked over there. And these ones, I think these ones have just been released. Um, the people from Fluid will be in the chat to answer all of your questions. Um, um, the interesting thing is um, that uh, the people from Fluid, actually, we made the deal at the same time as I made the deal with Head to review them. Um, but they saw the live stream and uh, they found it really interesting and they said, yeah, yeah, but, you know, 
it didn't really come through how the speakers sounded. And I said, yeah, I mean, I would love to, to get a stereo pair of microphones on there like this, but I'm not sure if that's, you know, if that's cool to do, because usually when I talk about these things, you know, the usual speaker, uh, speaker brands, they, they don't like an approach like this. And the reason is that, um, you know, it, it's not, it's not very realistic. Um, and, and for me, it's like, yeah, it can give you like like a global picture of of how the speaker sounds definitely when you're abing, but but it's it's not it's not realistic. And I I told them this, this story and I said like I, I would love to try it out, but only if you're okay with it, of course, because I, I want to of course uh, give an honest view uh, of the speakers. And uh, and they said yeah, why not uh, give it a shot? So tonight we're going to try. Um, uh, or I am going to try to give you all the experience of, of sitting here in my studio and, and hearing the speakers as well. And I want from all of you to know if you like this experience or not, if this is something you would like to see in future review videos as well. And if um, if that is really going to be a thing, I would, I'm, I'm thinking of reaching out to Neumann and getting like that, that custom head uh, thing um, to do that with, like the binaural thing. Um, so these microphones are Neumann KM184. Uh, um, they are actually on loan from Soundvision because uh, I don't I don't have them. Uh, I just got them from Soundvision for tonight. Um, I tried a few different microphones um, because I wanted to check like, hey, what gives the most realistic um, real realistic image? And um, um, these ones by far gave gave the best uh, the best sound. Uh, when playing back later, um, it's, it's, I mean the most realistic sound. So, uh, but it's still, I, I would still say it's like eighty-five to ninety percent. Um, anyway, let's see. Yeah, I think um, I think I'm going to unbox them. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a mess again. Um, and while unboxing, of course, um, everything I'm saying on my channel is my complete, honest and independent opinion. Fluid didn't pay me uh, to review these speakers. And uh, I'm going to send them back after my review. And, you know, everything is just, you know, completely honest and independent. If you appreciate that, uh, make sure to support the channel because that's where I like my funds to come from. Uh, I'd rather have it viewer funded than uh, being a channel that basically sells commercials. Um, you can you can support me using the links down below, affiliates, memberships, uh, all that kind of stuff. And you can bring your message into the live show by using the super chat feature. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, yeah, that's. Um, let's make a mess. Over. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I I don't know if it's overkill. I mean. They're not that big. They, they do have 675 watts. So, um, I, I, I mean, 675 watts of speaker, I think I think combined amplifier power. Is that is that a lot or is that not a lot? I don't know. I have, <laughs> I have 750 watts per channel on my system, so. So, so to me, it doesn't sound like a lot. Yeah, that's one of the things, by the way, that I forgot to mention. Um, these speakers, uh, they have DSP in them. Uh, and you can link it to Sound ID, Sonarworks Sound ID. And by... Um, um, uh, by doing that, you can you can natively get the filters in here. We're not going to do that tonight because that's you know measuring everything with Sonarworks is a lot of work, and that's something for the full review video. T tonight we're just going to listen to like the the speakers as they are. Doo -doo -doo. All right, we've got some foam. Oh, and then we have the speaker. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. Mm. Always have to figure out where I can touch this thing and where I can't. 
Uh. All right. Tonight, what time is it over there? It's eight o'clock over here. I'm in the Netherlands. Um, and the Netherlands is, is, is like super cold right now. Like I actually came to the studio a bit earlier just just to warm up again, just from, from the travel from my home to here. It's so cold. All right, so here it is. Whoa. It's heavier than it looks. This is it. Oh, that's interesting. It has the, the high frequency driver. That, uh, like so mids here and highs there okay so if you put them on your desk you have to put them probably you have to put them upside down uh, and the interesting thing is the subwoofers or what is it the low frequency drivers they're on the sides of the, of the speaker okay interesting interesting let's uh, let's quickly show you all the back of this thing Yeah, I'm uh, uh, to answer R R Radek. Radek, um, I am going to to of course uh, tell you all how they sound, how I think how they sound uh, as well. What was the app called again? The stream NDI. That was it called. Do, 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 do. Now, if I did everything correct. We shouldn't have the sound issue like last time. All right, so this is the um, this is the back. The back of it. Um, a lot less controls than the head. We've got uh, volume, we've got a standby switch. I think this is when you turn the standby off, it's always on. I think that's what it is. We've got a an adjustment for the low frequencies. Then we have the mid. Mid frequencies. Um, High frequencies, we've got a ground lift, high frequencies, it's it's all a one decibel uh, change. And I think it's actually changing the uh, the volume of the driver and not not like a shelf filter or something. We've got a ground lift, we've got analog digital, left right channel, and that is for when you're using it uh, on AES on digital. We've got an analog input on jack, we've got a digital input both on AES and SP diff. Got a USB connection. My camera doesn't really want to focus. Got a USB connection. And we've got a foot switch to put it into mix cube mode. And um, uh, that's also one of one of the features um, uh, of the fluids. I'm not sure how it how it works, but I think it just turns off uh, uh, the other drives. It only it only turns on the the mid driver in the center, this one. Uh, I, th I think that's what it is. And then it simulates a, a mix cube, which is, you know, kind of genius. Um, you can turn the logo and put the tweeter top if needed. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not going to try it right now because I probably will damage it. Let me, uh, let me put this thing on here. All right, let's get the second one. Or should I first look at the accessories? What should I do? Second speaker or accessories? Digital and yeah, these speakers have digital inputs, yeah. A lot of speakers have digital inputs. It's kind of annoying. I'm going to look at the accessories. I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's a foot switch. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I was already thinking like, hey, how, how am I going to do that with that foot switch? But there's a foot switch in there. That's also everything. Okay, cool. Accessories, yeah. Let me put that stuff on the tape machine. Um, 
so digital audio directly into speaker, it makes a lot of sense because the speakers all have DSP in, in them. It's all already digital. So if you go analog in the speaker, you have your DA converter, your own DA converter, and then an AD converter in the speaker. And you can cut out that DA AD loop then. The downside is volume control. You have to have a, a monitor controller that supports AES. That's always an issue. I'm going in there analog because um, uh, my, my monitor controller has an extra analog output and that's the only thing that I have over here. So My analog signals tend to be, you know, I'm taking a lot of care of getting good analog signals in the studio. So I'm not worried about the signal not being good enough. Two, 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 two. two speakers, two speakers total. Yes. Um, one of the things to notice as well that these uh, these things uh, cost two thousand euros per piece. So if you want to have a stereo setup, it's it's going to cost you four thousand euros, um, which is, I mean, it's kind of expensive. Don't, but on the other hand, for speakers, like the the range of, of prices for speakers is so wide that it's actually, if, if you look at it from that perspective, it's actually more on the low side. Not not saying that I have 4,000 euros to, to just, you know, splurge on a set of speakers. No, not right now. Oh, this one doesn't come with accessories. Oh, okay. Okay, it's very difficult to uh, to handle them. I'm, I'm very worried to damage them because on the front you've got sensitive parts, on the sides you've got sensitive parts. So how do how do I handle them without damaging them? Uh, let me check uh, analog power. Power on. Okay. Okay. Um. Let me show you what this looks like. Let me show you. Uh, this is, this is what this looks like now. All right. Um, I think let's, shall I just, I first want to know if there's any sound coming out of them. Let's, uh, that was, oh, okay. I might I might be having a challenge here because I've only got like one side so Oh yeah, input analog, that will help. Yeah, okay. Of course, it was the a user error, yeah. Okay, now let's make sure that the settings are the same on both. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Zero, zero, center, yeah, okay. A 
and this one zero zero over there centered okay cool think let's listen yeah oh okay 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 there's already one thing that i really like about them that's like kind of impressive for these small small form speakers i think that there's a lot of um a lot of low frequency power in them that's um that's interesting um yeah i wasn't expecting like like the adams not adams the heads sorry the heads uh, which are definitely not Adams. They they struggle a little bit with with getting good power in in the low frequencies. And these ones uh, these ones pretty expressive just out of the box. Let's um, um, how do they sound versus Adam uh, versus Head is is a better comparison. Um, you know they all have a ribbon driver, so <laughs> that part kind of sounds the same. I, I I'm going to compare them with Quasar right now on the on the stereo setup. Um, I I cannot really uh, really compare them with the the heads because I only have one set of outputs on my monitor controller, so that that's an issue. Now he recognizes he had the mains on. No, no, uh, I I know how my system sounds. I know how my system sounds. It's also it's also like like what I'm going to do now. It's so unfair because also you know. My main system, com compa comparing that with near fields, like, <laughs> but we're still going to do that because it's fun. Um, so let's put the stereo setup here. Let's make sure it's set correct. All right. And now, and now I'm going to listen to the same signal as all of you. Let me see. Like this. Okay. Yeah, that works. It's a huge level. So uh, I'm seeing a few com comments about uh, level matching, but uh, I, I was doing that. So uh, the second part was uh, was more level matched. Um, funny thing is, is now they're almost, you know, I, I don't think I can lower them any any further. And uh, when listening listening acoustically without without the in ears, um, they're kind of level matched. But the difference you are hearing is the difference. In those in those drivers, um, the drivers in Quasar they are super fast, but they sound super calm. And ribbon drivers tend to be a little bit more more piercing, more 
I don't want to say aggressive because that's not the correct word. But but that's kind of kind of what what you're picking up now. Let me let me see if I can even lower them even more. It's possible, I think. Let's see. No, then I'm turning them off. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'll try it for all of you on a little bit lower, lower level. No, low and you cut the speaker. No, no, that's the that's the issue that I have with like a stereo setup like this. Um, let me try it on the other one. So, um, I saw one user saying that that I cut at them or something. Uh, they're fully intact. I mean, um, let, let's do one more comparison. One more comparison. Right, it's so difficult to compare speakers with setups like these. Um, you all were listening to just annoyments. Uh, this microphone was uh, turned off. I saw that. Um, uh, I saw that there were some questions about that. Um, also, to answer the question from Fluid, uh, can you check if Sidewoofer is working on both? Yes, the Sidewoofers are working. Um, and actually, you know, from what I'm hearing on my in ears, um, I'm just hearing less low end on my in ears than I'm hearing in the room here. So. Um, so, so I think we're okay there. Um, what a cruel <laughs> trapping, trapping a jazz band in the studio to absorb the bass frequencies. So, um, I switched between uh, these speakers and my main speakers uh, during during the comparison, and um, it's 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 kind of interesting to to hear the difference between the two. Uh, also here in the room. Uh, and, and the most significant difference, I mean, we're talking about a freestanding near field speaker compared to, to a main system that is flush mounted, soffit mounted. And uh, so it's, it's not really a fair comparison, but the main difference really from my first impression is the high frequencies. The high frequencies sound very different. Now, what is even more interesting to see, and this is something that I want to do in, in for the review video or for the 
research of a review video is checking uh, the measurements between between those two because I have a feeling that the measurements are quite the same. So if we're talking about decibels, it's quite the same. But when we're talking about sound and sound character, which is something that is a bit more difficult to measure and a bit more difficult to bring across, I think that's um, uh, that's going to be the different the difference between the two. Does the sound match the size of the speakers? They sound a bit bigger than they are. That, I, that's why I said whoa at my first listen. They really sound a bit bigger. Um, they did a good job on that. Definitely, definitely on the on the low frequencies. They're, they're very good at, at producing them. But I mean, they have double drivers on the sides that are, you know, they're both pushing outwards. So I mean, they're capable of, of producing a lot of a lot of um, sound pressure that way. The image you sounds big. Yeah, fluid. I, I, I know uh, that, you, that you're convinced of your product, but um, people always have to check that for themselves, of course. Like, like of, co of course, they sound bigger. Like, like every, every salesperson would say that. Uh, stereo width and depth. That's something that I want to I, I listen a little bit more uh, about. Uh, the stereo field did sound good already. I, I already had some, some stereo... Uh, placement uh, already from from the first get go. Um, are those subs both active? Um, I think the ones on the um, uh, on the fluid. Yeah, I mean it's an all in one system, so it's just power goes in and signal goes in. Um, do you still need subwoofers if you use them? I mean that depends on your room as well. Um, I. I I find the subwoofer question always very, very interesting because, you know, with a subwoofer, you're solving one problem while creating another problem. And one of the problems that you could be creating is a timing problem because the subwoofer will probably be on the floor, different distance, and it needs a lot of very, very good processing to get that right. Um, it would only be cool to use a subwoofer if you can, you know, directly connect that with your speaker because then it will have the same um, the same timeline, the same the same starting point where, where the wave starts to to move outwards from there. Um, so yeah, subwoofers are always a difficult, difficult discussion. I think I would say the ribbon treaters sound pretty smooth, but I'm not even sure if I came along right when you switched the speakers. Yeah, um, the fluid ones were recognizable because you you could hear more mids and high frequencies in them, and the mains had a little bit less mid and high frequencies in them. That's that's how the the general sound field was. Um, yeah. I can do another another one of these stereo comparisons if, if you all want to see them. Or, you know, is it just a failed experiment? That could also be the case. Mm. The thing is, um, um, the thing is I, I just wanna wanna find a new way, a better way to um to bring across the experience of a speaker, because if I can bring that across, it's you know, speaker reviews get get a lot easier. Then, did you just yours to have less highs? So that's an interesting question. Um, my speakers uh, have been engineer adjusted. Um, Lennart actually calibrates the system together with the engineer that is going to work on it and creates a custom preset for that engineer. And, and you're doing that together. And I do have a tendency to wanting to have less high frequencies in my monitoring. Um, main reason for that is that it's more calming to me. And um, if there is a lot of high frequencies in there, I get listening fatigue pretty quickly. So... Um, yeah, uh, compared to some dance music, I don't have any 
royalty free dance music over here right now. So um, let's see what I have in here. I have some more jazz, classical, some, some poppy funky, pop, whatever. I think I want to do it on that funk jazz track because there's a lot of low frequencies in there. Do you like the speakers or other fluids? I, I haven't listened to other fluids. Another stereo compression. I'm working on it. I'm working, working on another stereo comparison. Here we go again. Um, one of the things I want to do next time is have some overlays of which speakers you are you're listening to. Um, I don't I don't want to talk into these microphones while doing the comparison. Do you have the trend off in your studio environment? No, no, no. It's it's a custom it's a custom setup. It's custom built, um, and it's it's you know calibrated to uh, to the engineer. Um, you you can compare the thing that they're doing with Sonoworks with Trinoff, with all that kind of stuff. But it's 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 not an off-the-shelf system. Oh, this is an interesting comment. You are a loser, Vietze, and you suck at your industry. Okay, interesting. Why? I mean, such a comment doesn't help anybody. At least explain what what is going on. I mean, explain yourself. Come on, man. And while, and while you explain what I'm doing wrong, why I'm a loser, I'm, I'm going to set up this stereo setup. So explain yourself. Let me know. I mean, my email address is just everywhere. So send me an email. So that's the that's the comparison. Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm getting a few questions about phase response and and if they sound balanced to my ears. Um, I I cannot really talk about that right now. I, I really want to listen to them a lot more before before I'm going to uh, draw some conclusions on them. Uh, as said, the first um, the first uh, impression was was really really impressive. Like literally, the first impression was really impressive. Um, let me get my hair straight. Yeah, the better. Um, um, but but I first want want to listen to that. And uh, I also saw a question about the um, 
uh, the balance in frequencies. And the thing is, there's software that you can use to connect to these speakers and then select the, uh, certain profiles. And there's Sonarworks as well. I want to dive into all those things first. I want to first see like what are the options, what are the what are the things that I can do with that, uh, and uh, talk about that in my actual uh, review video, um, because it, it's a very interesting part actually of of speakers, of speaker products, um, the way it's um, um, the way that the customization is designed i actually already emailed head about this like i've got a lot of knobs on the back of my speaker and i have no clue how to set them and the guidance towards setting up the speakers so placing them correctly in the room uh, connecting them correctly like correct levels that kind of stuff and calibrating them that whole guidance is very important and uh, you can guide people by the, uh, by having the correct user experience, um, either with software or with hardware, with like how how to set the, the knobs. So I first want to dive into that before I can really say like, hey, are these in balance or not? Um, I would get Neumanns or Genelex for the price. Also good speakers. I mean, there there are so many so many <laughs> there are so many speaker brands that are good and. Um, there is, and that's that's another issue of reviewing speakers. There's so much personal preference in there. There's just so much. What you should actually do, if, if you're interested in, in getting speakers, like interested in fluids or interested in head or whatever, make sure that you can test them and not test them like for five minutes in a shop, but make sure you can test them for a bit longer time in a studio situation. That can either be your own studio or in a different studio where you can plug in your system and work on it for a few hours because that tells you so much more about speakers than, than everything else. Like uh, Basically, the only way to, to make a purchase decision is by, by testing the speakers uh, in a good way. So um, that's interesting. Have you bought these? No, no, these are review samples that, that have to be sent back after my review. And for me, that's fully fully okay. I have a good speaker setup, so, uh, so that's no problem. Let's see, what do we have more? As we say in Spain, no entre al trapo, forget the troll. Um, yeah, about that. Um, it's, it's interesting. Okay, it's story time. <laughs> I know I'm running, uh, I'm running a bit of a different channel than most people. I know that I have a big mouth and stuff. And I know that, that you know, sometimes people do things type certain comments and receiving one of them is like no problem but receiving them every day 10 of them every single day it's not that bad right now but there have been periods they, they can really get under your skin and it's kind of weird that um, if you are being attacked that people say leave them leave them alone don't do anything so they're basically basically saying, do not defend yourself. That's, I mean, th th that's a bit weird. Like, sometimes I just have to kind of defend myself. And the, the issue just with, with haters is, if they have a point, I would like to know because I want to learn. So that that's the annoying thing uh, about haters. Yeah, don't read that. I know, I know. Most of them, I don't read them. But sometimes I'm just like... Like last week in the live stream, somebody was like talking about nail polish. And one of the things that the people in the live stream didn't see back then uh, was the second comment he made. Because that one was uh, hidden. And I saw it. And because of that second comment, I knew what the vibe was of the person. Because the first comment was, you know, could look kind of relaxed or could look very bad. But it was very bad. And that is why I, you know... 
went in there in, in the last live stream. I know haters are a minority. I know all those things. But just sometimes, sometimes I'm just, you know, sometimes I'm just so done with those people. Some, I mean, I'm just, some. I have my moments sometimes. Um I mean, I'm human. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, if you have any questions about the fluids, let me know. The people from Fluid will also be in the chat. If you have other questions, also let me know. Consider sending a super chat message uh, for your question as well. That way you're sure I'm seeing it because chats tend to get pretty quick sometimes. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Why do you love auto gain so much? Um, this is actually one of those things that I can make a clip out of because... I've talked about this a few times in snake oil, but not every time. So, if you have an analog piece, uh, do I have something? Oh my God, now we're going to make a mess. Um, if you have an analog piece, like the distressor. Oh, here we go, out again. <laughs> if you have an analog piece, like the distressor. Distressor is a good example. Or a, a um, Universal Audio 1176, something like that. Stam Audio. Um, they have input and output gain. Input gain, output gain. Two hands, two knobs. And I can, you know, while I adjust the input gain, I'm adjusting the output gain. Simple as it is. In a plugin, there sometimes are two knobs, input and output gain. But I only have one mouse. So how am I going to do that? How can I... I then have to input, output, input, output, input, output. That's not a cool workflow. And with auto gain, I, I most of the times I just mean linking, linking the input and the output together, or creating some compensation algorithm so that you're not boosting the gain by like 15 decibels or something. Um, uh, I want to keep my gain levels kind of the same. It's okay if if a plugin gains like two or three decibels while doing things. That's fully okay. But I want to keep my general level the same. That's just for um, for, you know, workflow purposes, that's just way, way better. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's why I think auto gain. And, and on, to, on top of that, if you want to make a plugin that is better than analog, you have to make it better than analog, not the same. And auto gain can be one of those things. So it's always surprising to me how much features they add how much weird things they, they come up with like an ms section and um uh you know controllable analog noise whatever and then the thing that a computer is good at doing tasks that we are too lazy to do they're not implementing that so i really uh is, is there an analog version of auto gain? Actually, a piece of um, elastics or something. Then you can connect the two together. I, I can make a small video about that, actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <clears throat> Let's see. Looking forward to hearing... What you think after you shut the room and implemented sound ID? Yeah, I, I'm also really interested to see uh, to see what sound ID can bring to the table for for these type of speakers. Um, I think I think I'm going to work on that tomorrow already. Um, but the video won't be out. I think a month from now. I think I've I've got it. I think it will take a, a month before it will be out on YouTube. Uh, yeah, about a month. So I have to keep you all. A bit intention. <clears throat> All right. So I think that's it. I think that's it. That's I think that's everything that I have to share about um, ab about these fluid monitors. Do you think the plug-in world is saturated? Yes, absolutely. Are you German? Nope, I'm Dutch. <laughs> So kind of. <laughs> if you ever use KRK, yes. Yeah. Um, they have they have a lineup that is really good. The what were they called again? KRK Expose Expose. They were really good. So 
So yeah, I, th- I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, yeah, I didn't have any questions from the from the members uh, for this stream, so nothing to answer there. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm going to uh, clean up the mess here. Thank you all a lot for joining the live stream. As always. Oh, I need to do 